Okie dokie. Welcome everyone today. Thanks for joining us on our reset for Friday here. Uh, it's Friday the 13th, uh, so it's a little spooky, but I'm sure we'll get through it together. Uh, I'll go ahead and kind of jump right into things. We've got a special guest today, and I mean a special guest, um, uh, John Thompson, who is going to share some wisdom with us today. And uh, he's also got a client coming into his office here, so we've got to let him go at some point to, to make some money, keep the lights on. Uh, Bar Smart Software, Bar Smart Repay Smart. We talk about the uh, opener each week as it's where your mindset and what you learn to do uh, meets skill set in terms of a tool that allows you to do it. Uh, it's not about, as we say, what the software does, it's what the user does. And this series is about helping you to be aware of the changes and the improvements and enhancements we're making to the software. But more importantly, uh, to help upgrade the user in every call with new ideas, strategies, uh, ways to think about what it is that uh, you do for your clients. Um, if you're a first time listener, I like to sh share this one slide here, which is really if you take all the money you've invested in licensing, marketing, company tools, systems, training, events, experience, all of that was done to get you to a position to be able to talk to a client, which we'll, we'll think of as a lead. So once you do that, and the big question for you should be what happens here? How are you going to make sure that when that client comes in, you do everything you can based on your skills, your abilities, and all those resources to make sure that you make the sale? You do not make the sale in the 1003 or in the lending process. There are other sales you can make there, but the sale to get a client to go with you, for you to make your competition irrelevant, which is the way we like to approach this, uh, this is the point where you have an opportunity to do that. Our particular approach, idea, strategy, Whatever you want to call it is based around a functionally tested model that helped to increase conversion rates by over 70% when a lending group that was working with a very large national base of clients realized that clients had a couple of key questions and when those questions were answered, they became clear. Do I have the cash now? Can I afford this transaction, whether it be closing costs, down payment, whatever is going to come out of pocket at closing, that's the first hurdle, first barrier we've got to get someone comfortable with. Secondly, can I afford it on a monthly basis? Over time, do I have the cash flow? Am I going to be happy if I go from a 30 to a 15? What's, going to, what's that going to do to my monthly cash flow? Um, if I refinance, if I do a reverse mortgage, whatever the case may be, people live lives of cash flow. That's where their confidence is. We need to be able to speak to that directly. And then lastly, can I afford this later? What's the net impact to my cash and wealth over time? And this is the hardest thing for most of us to answer because it's very complicated when you get a lot of different loan programs and different dynamics. We talked to a large national bank this week with 365 loan officers, and they were using an Excel spreadsheet to have a conversation with their clients. Not only was it out of compliance, but there was nothing about that spreadsheet that allowed them to have a conversation. It was a simple set of numbers that they could yield on a static basis with no changes to compare one loan to another. And that's again where we believe that we're really differentiating and helping you uh, if you're competing with someone like that uh, to basically not only take their lunch, uh, but eat it, eat it too. It's gotta be fast, it's gotta be easy, it's gotta be accurate, fast for you to use, easy for you and your client to interact with, and accurate, uh, both in logic and math. And that's important because we continue to see uh, uh, scenarios where the math is accurate, but the logic is inaccurate. And that's one of the things we're trying to, to clarify. The math is accurate, but we need to make sure the logic is accurate and the way you're presenting information is done so in a, in a fair way. If you do that, it creates clarity and confidence in your client. And with that clarity and confidence, it leads them to action. The maybes in life will drive you crazy, especially as a salesperson. We need someone to say yes or no, and the system's designed to help you do that. And I hope those of you who are using it are experiencing that. If someone says no, be happy, uh, do a dance, because that gives you time, energy. It uh, keeps you out there working with people that really appreciate what it is that you do. In terms of the weekly updates, all of our flyers were updated today. Um, and what we've done, I'll just see if I can quickly uh, share with you what we did there. Um, we went into the flyers and we had some additional uh, controls that people want us to be able to add. Hey, Todd, One of those we're not being seeing your that, screen the share. disclaimer on the flyer. Uh, people wanted that to be something that they could edit that would be different from a normal flyer. For example, if you're doing a, uh, a purchase or refinance plan, that's one uh, thing. We're not if you're doing your open house flyer, share. 
we found that some people needed the ability in different states to have different language on the flyers they wanted to be able to mention realtor so the disclaimers now are dynamic this disclaimer you see when you create any flyer is dynamic you can edit the actual disclaimer in real time and uh, you can say my realtor sarah thompson and uh, no, I mean, whatever you want to do i mean you can go here. through and this is going to be dynamically populated through to your new open house flyer so uh, let me share with you an example share. of what that looks like, just so you know. Uh, I'll do uh, open house flyer and uh, the finance flyer full. That's my favorite. And I'll click on present and click as a flyer. And you'll see we've, we've altered the format a tiny bit to allow for this. Uh, we had some banks that were using some larger disclosures and down payments. And uh, we had some that had smaller ones. So now what we've done Todd, and this is, you know, you're entering the financial Todd. planning, financial services world when your disclosures become half of your page, because that's what you'll see in the financial planning world. The top half of a, of, a, of a piece is marketing and information. The bottom half is disclosures. And then we've seen a, a big change. But in this finance flower, you'll notice, you know, here's my loan option side by side. What we've done is we've compressed this and formatted the text left and right. That makes for a larger picture and larger logo area for the main flyer um, and you can have that with or without your referral partner and now you'll notice this is my realtor Sarah Thompson so this is our default uh, disclaimer that we've put in here that you can edit Todd. or use ours and, and customize it and this is all of the new compliance uh, related to the arm so this goes through and, for any, and you'll only see these if there's an arm in this case I actually do have an arm in all three columns even though this says 30 so I've got three arms if you have no arms you'll just see this disclaimer and nothing else if you have three arms you're going to see a separate disclosure for each arm showing the current required fields around apr uh, payment adjustments and whatnot this is this required a totally new engine that we built some time ago uh, we had to go through and, and modify that engine to allow these dynamic disclosures here to be paired with uh, the uh, flyer and, and this is true for all of your flyers so whether you're doing an open house flyer finance flyer uh, all so by down are flyer, all of those now operate in the same way with both the dynamic component as well as uh, the dynamic being the uh, your disclosure here and the required uh, stuff that we are putting onto the main flyer. Uh, so that's that. That's the one update that we've actually gotten out and gotten live this week. Uh, the other stuff is still forthcoming. We have been testing our dynamic HTML reports. We ran into a few challenges with some of the features we wanted to incorporate. We had to work through those this week. So now we push this back about another week to have this part done. The video integration, we've done some testing, but we are waiting on our partner developer to finish a code that we need for our server. So we had to push that back about a week. So we're still about a week out on the dynamic HTML reports and the video integration. Um, and, and, and fundamentally, let me just see. If I could even show you, uh, if we're on, are we in web test? Yeah. Uh, we're not even. So if I were to it, click Todd. on uh, a scenario Todd. here and I go to present, what we're going to be doing is all of this will go on. away here, and uh, most likely, uh, what you're going to have here is you're just going to have uh, one column with a list of all John, your available you attachments yeah, for your I can plan. Hear you John. I don't you can mouse over and see in the window a preview of what those look like, and you can click uh. the ones you want, and then you'll have one button here <laughs> that says "Build My Presentation." And when you build uh, that uh, uh, presentation, it's actually going to publish that directly to the web. So here's a real simple example here. So it's publishing that live presentation to the web. And up here, you'll have your buttons. Download uh, as a PDF, me? print as a PDF, share my desktop, record a video, um, share to the web, create a secure website. You'll have all of the but controls you have today back. will be buttons across the top. Uh, but the report itself is going to be in HTML which means it's going to be dynamic. Um, so the report Lewis. itself will have, for example, sliders, and you'll be able to send this to a client, and they can go mm -hmm. through and interact with the report, slide the sliders around on different pages. I didn't pick a very good example because this is a, um, uh, I think it's a margin reverse mortgage or something. But anyway, that's the idea here is we're going to make this much uh, cleaner so you can preview kind of what you're going to build, and then you can build it and go in and take a look at it in real time and decide how do I want to dispose this? Do I want to sh you know, share this with my client? Do I want to record the screen? Do I want to uh, um, send it out as a website? Uh, all of that, or, or just give it to the client as something that they can sit around and uh, play with. And because it's a website, 
you'll be able to get updates and information around what's happening on that page as you uh, as you play around with it or as your client plays around with it. So wow, hopefully yeah, we'll have a, ver a working like version, at least in a beta next week that you'll be able to get in and, and, and play with and all this other stuff we're still continuing to uh, work on. So let me jump over and, uh, and get uh, John here going so that uh, uh, he can Todd. share with us some of his, uh, his font Todd. of wisdom. Welcome, Todd. John. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Todd, can you hear me? Hello, Todd. Well, I can hear you, John, but right. Todd John, not able to hear us. <laughs> oh, I can't hear it. I'm not sure how, hmm. how it's... Uh... John, did you get muted? Um, nope. We hear him. Did you get and Actually, me? hold on. Can you hear me now, John? I can hear you, Todd. Yeah, sorry. Me? My headset must have cut out. Um, so. Well, we, we've been trying to tell you we haven't been able to see your screen to share for 12 minutes. We've been trying to what? tell you. What? But... <laughs> you wouldn't stop and, and we were like emailing you. And no, my, head, you you my headset about. must have gone out because I was uh, I was wondering why I couldn't hear you guys. Uh, so my, my battery must have gone out. I don't know. Okay, well, hey, uh, that's uh, one for the books there. Most of you guys have seen the first the first couple of slides here. Uh, you probably can do that as well as I can. Can you can you screen share for us? We can't see it. It is still not screen sharing. Okay. So I guess John, when I went back over to my. Yeah, maybe we messed something up on the test. Ah uh, no, I probably just go. I forgot to share back out again. There we go. All right. Uh, thanks everybody for bearing with me there. You know, never never none dull moment. So I went through our normal uh, mindset skill set. Software does. Our overview, three questions, fast, easy, accurate, clarity, confidence, leading to action. Uh, shared with you all the flyer stuff, which you didn't get to see any of that. Um, and uh, and uh, an update on our status report. So I really uh, can't believe I didn't do that uh, correctly. Um, I will, uh, let me just kind of bop back over for one second. The main thing that I was sharing with you was on all of the finance flyers and stuff. So if you're in any finance flyers, open house flyers, et cetera, as you create those now, uh, you will notice that, uh, I'll hit you with that real quick, that the new format, since that's the one thing I was showing you, will have all of your information here and all of the dynamic uh, disclosures for up to three ARM products plus the fixed area here. So all four of our current active flyers have been reformatted. And then the other thing that I was sharing with you there was um, if you're working with a, a customer, and I want to kind of share with you what we're doing on the HTML, I was saying that all this would be going away and most of this would go away and it would be more of a simple list of all your options and you can mouse over and see here a preview of what that would look like. You click on your report and then say build report. And uh, when you click on uh, build your report, uh, what it was going to uh, do is it was going to build that for you in just about uh, five, 10 seconds. It's very quick. It's going to build to you this report and all of your controls will be up here. You can download, print, share, uh, publish to a web page or whatever. And all of that information would be dynamic. It would be web based um, and you could interact. So there may be sliders here where you can take and slide from zero years to 30 years. Uh, you can add extra payments and various increments and things and just see uh, the report which you've created for the client, uh, which is a uh, static report, becomes dynamic and allows the client to interact with that actual uh, report. So we think that's going to be a really, really cool innovation. And, and you'll be able to see in a report what happens when they go and they uh, mess around with that particular plan. So um, anyway. I apologize for the uh, screen sharing problem. Um, let, let me, I've got two case studies for us today, but I want to get, uh, get going with John here. So John, before I turn over the screen to you for your sample case, let me just ask a little bit about uh, your background. Uh, you've been in the business for how many years? Uh, let's see, I've been in the business 23 wonderful years. 23 years, my goodness. I didn't know anyone could stay in a career for that long. Uh, that's pretty cool. And you're based in uh, California, is that right? I'm in the Pasadena, Los Angeles area of California. Pasadena, yep. California. All right. That's a beautiful area, as you well know. Well, tell us a little bit about your business. How did you get into the mortgage business? Uh, wow. Okay. So, I uh, was looking for something to do, actually. My, uh, one of my best friends was an investment at my wedding, actually. I uh, owned a small little mortgage brokerage, and I was out of school and didn't have a lot to do. And he said, hey, come on over. And I literally started 
putting 10 degrees into an old DOS based system. And uh, that's why I sort of learned the business from the ground up and then got my real estate license and uh, realized that, you know, I liked what I was doing and people needed my help, so I kept going. Wow. And I built from there. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. And you, uh, you have your own shop. Are you completely independent or, or do you have your own shop? And, and are you yeah, within no, a I, larger I group? A, I own a branch of a you know, small, medium sized mortgage banker here in California called First Party Financial. And so I own our branch down here in, the, in my local market. Cool. And I know you've had uh, a wild swing of years in terms of the business. What's, what's, uh, what's your best year in the business been so far in terms of total production? Oh, well, we'd have to go back a little ways. But uh, yeah, no, <laughs> Absolutely. So, that, I mean, that's something not a lot of offers can say that they've actually gone out and uh, cracked a hundred million in in a year in terms of, of closing. To do that level of business, you have to have a little bit of a team. So, I think you work with a couple of people in your team, right? Uh, we do. Uh, at one at one stage, our team was largely people. Right now, there are actually four of us. Okay. Um, on our team, and we're you know, continuously looking to add more people and recruit other loan officers. So. That's great. And and. Uh, yeah, and are you a fan of, of working in a in a team like that? Um, I, I am. Uh, you know, and I really I really believe that you know, sort of going forward here over the next couple of years, our industry has gotten so difficult. We all know that it takes you know ten times as long to do the same amount of work we did a couple of years ago. That I think the only way to sort of maintain any level of business is going to be through an, in a team environment. Uh, so that's what we're building towards. That's great. And, and would you say are you what, what percentage of your business is purchase versus refi? Good, good. Um, for for you, as you as you look at, I know we're going to look at a, at a sample. But you look at your at your your experience in the business. Are there any things that that, that stood out for you um, uh, that you kind of said helped helped you make that transition from you know a lowly uh, young man sitting there uh, keying in ten o threes into a system for somebody to you know a level where you're doing a hundred million a year in production. Um, you know, what were some of the key switches that went off for you that made that possible, would you say? Well, it was meeting you, Todd. Oh, <laughs> I'd love to take credit for that, but, uh, but I can't. No, but, 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 you know, actually, uh, in, in all honesty, you were, you were an element of that learning curve. It wasn't at the beginning of the learning curve, but it was certainly through it. But, you know, I, I, I don't remember exactly where it was. It might have been in the early 2000s, maybe 2002 or three, where I sort of started realizing that, you know, the conversations we were having with clients were, were far different than what my peers were having. You know, they were, I was hearing them on the phone, putting rates and setting out GFEs. And, and yet I was talking about completely different stuff and talking about their families and what their goals were and when they wanted to retire. And, and, and it's just because that's what I wanted to know what they were doing. And so just through a sort of a process of self-development, I went out and started learning from other professionals. I started connecting with financial advisors and estate planning people and just sort of all the people in, in professional services side and, and realize it's a lot more value that I could bring to my clients if I could help them solve those other gaps and fill those other gaps in their lives. And so we started really intentionally started to build that through 2003, three, four, and 5. Um, and then, you know, through that process of discovery, you know, you know met, met you at uh, that point and sort of got involved with the mentor group and Bar Smart and all the rest of it. And that, you know, became the tool that we used to sort of really help people understand what we were telling them from a mortgage perspective. And, and, and where did most of your referrals come from now? Or, or what, what would fall into, so if you said existing clients and referral partners, what percent are, are just clients coming back and working with you again and, and say just some outside party referring into you? Well, okay, so, you know, of the refinance business we're doing currently, the, the majority of it, quite frankly, is people that, that we've known for, for years and we're able to recapture those, although there's a growing section of that that is coming from the financial advice world where, you know, they're seeing the value of, of the advice we can give them as we're getting those referrals. So probably, you know, of the refinance business, you know, 60 or 70 percent of it's coming from our existing database and the balance coming from financial professionals. Um, and then the, 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 the purchase business uh, is coming from a combination of existing, you know, re referral partners and uh, the last year and a half we've been really focused on building new relationships and I've been business development. 
What, what percent would you say are, are on of your purchase businesses, just your database existing versus, say, outside partners? Oh, um, okay, so of the purchases we have right now, yeah, actually I'd probably say it's a very small percent are existing clients that are sort of buying new properties, all new business coming from existing and new relationships. Okay, and, and, and you say that's a combination of both realtors and advisors? Yes. Awesome. Um, and do you have a you have a, a, a secret sauce in terms of how you approach uh, building out those new referral partners? I know everyone has a different way. The last uh, two people we've talked to, one was doing radio shows, one was going out and doing financial education inside realtor offices as a way to sort of you know um, get his foot in the door. Yeah. What what works best for you? Um, you know, our, our our folks right now, and as we're meeting new people and existing real estate partners, is is you know, to sort of lump them sort of in one of three areas. We believe heavily in education and financial education is one of our things. And one of the ways we try to accomplish that and get our partners involved is sort of by doing these mastermind groups. And so we've had some good success with mastermind groups where when we go and meet somebody new who's considering being, you know, that we want to see if we like them, they like us, and, and so forth, we sort of require them to get involved with us on one of three levels. And one level would be to commit to a monthly mastermind meeting where we do accountability type stuff and we sort of all agree on our, you know, the things we're working on and then they, you know, full, sort of follow through on that. So it allows me to coach them kind of in a group environment. So they at least have to commit to that. Um, at, at a next level, um, there would be people that want to go specifically into the educational side. And so we have some, you know, great financial education tools that we go out. And for those that want to go down that road with fine appreciation, events or you know, general seminars to the public or even webinars, that would be a second level that certain ones would want to engage in, so some might do that. Then on a third level, we have other realtors that maybe don't want to get involved on, on, on that, you know, sort of mastermind groups and so forth, but what we'll do with them is say, you know, we, we, need, we want to have a business process in place, so we need to understand what you're working on, what's working for you right now, what's not working, and then we're trying to help them fill those gaps. So we ask them to meet with us, you know, every couple of weeks to work on, it might be databasing, it might be, you know, social media, whatever it is. And so we have a specific process where if they won't work with us on one of those three levels, then they're really probably not going to be a good business partner for us. And we've just had that really in place for the last couple of months, and it's it's going great. I mean, every single person we meet with wants to get involved and, and build their business. So that's, if anything, would be our secret sauce right now. Wow, that 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 that's huge. You think about how many loan officers are out there uh, trying to get somebody to talk to them about a mortgage, but you're going a whole different route. You're actually saying, I'll help you coach and, and I'll help you to build and grow your business and, and coming in from more of a, a position of, a, of a business development coach, but for these referral partners that you want to do business with. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. I love it. No, I, 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 lo I love the idea. And you said you're also doing client appreciation events. So those would be events that you then do for those partners to educate their clients as well. Yeah, a great example is, you know, we have in, I think it's two weeks from now, um, we have one of our newer realtor partners that wanted to do a client event where he's just talking about investing in real estate. So we have great content. He's going to bring everyone in. We're providing, you know, a space and the material and he's bringing the clients and, you know, kind of a winning win for both people. Wow, man, that's fantastic. Um, very, very cool. All right, well, uh, I know... But you have a team, so you know, yeah. the whole team concept, you know, those things are difficult to implement unless you then have a team taking care of all the, you know, the things back in the office and making sure things are getting done. That's why I think you have to have those things going forward. You know, and, and a team for most, most uh, people that I talk to, I mean, we do some coaching with advisors, and, and one of the first questions I ask, ask them to do is just tell me a little bit about their team. And it's really interesting because I find it's very much chicken or egg. Uh, some people believe that a team is something that you have uh, when you get to a certain size, and other people believe that you have a team to get to a certain size. Um, and it's not the other way around because without a team, it's very difficult to get to that kind of level of production and, and again, working the way you're working. Having gone through it, I'm sure that same struggle yourself for you how did how did your team develop? Did you wait till you got a certain size individually, and did you start hiring some people, or did you hire someone along the way and then continue to hire? How'd you build your team? Um, you know, I've always had a team, and, and I don't really remember when that, that happened in my mind that I realized that you know this goes way back to you know those who've been around a while and, and know the Todd Duncan and all that kind of stuff. You, you know, you, you were told you had to invest in your business, be your business as a CEO. 
um, and that's how I really have viewed it. Even when times have been lean and tough, you know, I've always had at least two other people here beside me, you know, sort of taking phone calls and, 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 and sort of helping manage leads and the rest of it. Um, and, you know, so currently I have you know a person who helps me on the business development side that goes out and is far better talking to realtors than I am. Um, and so she does that probably 50% of her time. Then the other part of her time, quite frankly, is helping me follow up on you know, leads and, and transactions that could come together. And so she's helping me chase down those. Um, then we have another person on the team that uh, you know, is purely a transaction. So when it gets handed over to you know, it's a live transaction, she is doing every single thing in that. And she's a, a long time loan officer that just couldn't sort of take it on anymore on her own. And I said, great, come over here. I'll give you a salary. And we'll put a bonus structure in place and you know the business as well as I do. Get them in and get, get them through as quick as we can and, and, and that's it's working great. And then I have another, just hired another young person who's going to be coming in and, and starting to talk to the people who are just getting out of school and those those 20 and 30 somethings and, uh, and get licensed and start originating as well pretty soon. That's, that, that, that's fantastic and you're giving them an opportunity to grow in the business just like you did. Well, let's do this. Let's let's hop over and and uh, you know we kind of like to focus on uh, the BSA. I'm gonna turn it over to you here, um, and uh, it should allow you to, to share your screen. Maybe kind of share with us a little bit about how you're using uh, BSA in uh, in uh, your uh, business today, and and uh, just any wisdom that that you know you could share as it relates to how you differentiate yourself either through your partners, your client interactions, etc. So you're you're providing you're using the plan as an overview for what you know the objectives of the client may be, and and something that other people ask a lot of times around process. So for you, a lot of times getting that information might be entered in by someone in your office, and and then you're going to go through and you're going to actually do the narration with your client, right? Correct. Yeah. And if you were taking someone through in this plan, it looks like you've got a client here who was refinancing to get some cash out to maybe buy an investment property. Exactly the same, but yet be able to pay off your mortgage sooner, you know, through 
you know, moving some of that money into a different area, would that make, you know, would that be interesting to you? And, and of course they said yes. And so, you know, ultimately this is the plan that we put together for them, and this is actually closing pretty soon. Um, and so it, I'll simply walk you through it. So we, they're refinancing from, you know, mortgage in, in the low 300s up to a, a 380 mortgage. They're going to pull about $43,000 out. I tend to use this summary format more than I do the five-page one. Um, it tends to be a little quicker for clients, and, and I might lose them by the third page of another report, so I mm-hmm. try to keep it all on this page. Um, but it, it enables me to give them the, the high flyover, which is what a lot of people simply want. So you'll see here they went from a payment of 1800 you know, to a new payment of about $1,700. Um, uh, you know, they saved about six bucks a month, but they got 43 grand in cash. Uh, we see down here they break even, about 32 months, um, and they're debt-free because what we're then going to take this money and we're going to, you know, save and invest the money and their freedom point comes a little bit sooner down the road. Um, and so I'll show them this kind of page. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this second page of, of this section, but I'll quickly show you here that, uh, you know, they were, they're thinking retiring about 15 years. That was sort of their time frame that they gave me they wanted to think about. And so in the software, we again show their current payment plus, you know, making the same payment and then taking this $43,000 and putting it somewhere else and what the overall impact is. And we see the impact down here at $61,000, um, you know, net wealth gain over that time period. Um, I, I love these. Um, I almost always use these charts because people seem to like really the idea of, you know, seeing this debt, you know, decreasing over time um, and the rest of it. And then over here, then it's very easy for them to show, you know, they'll see up here they're paid off currently at 26 years and 10 months. Um, and then over here, sort of with the plan that we're proposing and they're putting together, they'll see again the same debt kind of coming coming down. But they're also going to see the increase in their assets on the other side going up, um, and the debt free point in 21 years and eight months. So it, again, not earth shattering stuff, but a way to visually represent it to them that they understood, um, and we're able to take action around as opposed to thinking that you know I just wanted them to pull money in their house and go and you know do something else with it. That's very cool. And, and again, you know, so you're showing a four page report and, and I like that because I'm always uh, amazed at how many different ways people will present. And so for you, it's uh, you're clicking on the two page uh, report and then clicking on the uh, the graphs. And then that gives you a nice uh, maybe click over, click on the present. And uh, so to build that kind of a report, John's building. Yep. So that's just two buttons he's clicking there, two page sample summary and the repayment charts. And then that gives him a nice presentation, four pages that shows the technical math and the numbers and then shows the client uh, the other stuff as well. So, again, very simple, very elegant. And when you when you render the full plan out uh, for the booklet you create for each client, yep. do you do the same or do you also tend yeah, to do a more? So, so John, John, before you do that, go back to that and just kind of flip forward to page nine, uh, and because I, I want to just point something out, because this is one of those features that some people may not be clear on. Uh, so basically, at the end of John's report, so he picked uh, the AM tables, which are a part of this report, and then when he goes to page ten, uh, the My PDF uh, is an attachment that will that you can click the button and will add that and build that right into your. A report so you can build any 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 kind of a PDF that you want you can do that yourself you can use publisher you can uh, have a, a graphic person do that for you and then that becomes something I've had people do a uh, company brochures individual brochures um, I've seen people do a, a process like here's our process so you can learn about 
uh, how TG Loans uh, works with their clients differently. But don't forget about that as a as a marketing uh, function that can be uh, can be a nice uh, thing that you want to attach to some of your reports. And you do that through your uh, pro, through your uh, um, my accounts settings. There's a place there where you can upload that particular file, and uh, and then that file will become the uh, file that will show up there whenever you click the uh, my PDF file button. It's under my accounts. Yep, so you get my accounts and then you just go over there and you'll see right there it says add PDF file to reports. So if you add a report a PDF page there, then that will uh, be of eligible for you to attach that into your actual client presentations. So we have companies that like to use that for company information, process information, loan officers using it as part of uh, maybe a, a, a presentation. Maybe they just gave a presentation on credit scoring and they attach that as a PDF, then when they do the report for the client, they'll attach the uh, presentation that they just did as a PDF to their report. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Cool, man. I like, I like the style there. I like it simple. You're giving them just a one-two punch with the simple information and then a nice picture that they can take a look at. Um, and I'm sure that's based on experience of, 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 of years of, of messing around with, with what people want to see and don't see. Fantastic. Uh, any other last little uh, tidbits you'd uh, share? Yeah, no, nothing else really. Um, I was just going to say uh, this is the one little piece that we are. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Um, the management team thing. Uh, you know, we start to push on the back of our our our, our, our uh, final mortgage plans as well. And we're just if it's a purchase, we're writing in our name obviously here, and we're also writing the realtor in here, um, and then we're leaving it open for them to kind of fill in. And so we put a little sticky note on that says, you know, go ahead and send this back. Um, and we get these back pretty often. We do our own surveys as well, but every once in a while we'll get this back and we'll ask them to say, you know, do you need a financial advisor or, or a CPA? We need to identify. And so, you know, we, we maybe get back 20 or 25% of those from people, and that gives us an opportunity to make an outbound referral, um, you know, in, in that case as well. So I, I don't want to overlook that little tidbit that's in there as well. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, I really appreciate your time, John, just sharing some ideas. I always learn stuff, and I know the uh, listeners will pick up some ideas. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, rearranging a little bit to join us today, and uh, I wish you great luck with uh, with your client meeting. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Appreciate buddy. You. Talk to you soon. Bye, man. See you, man. All right. That was awesome. I uh, hope you guys picked up a few ideas. Let me uh, uh, restart, and I'll have Angie uh, uh, tell me, Angie, when... Uh, uh, you see my screen come back up. Let's see. All right, share my desktop. All right, Angie, can you can tell me if, if that's coming back up yet? Nope, actually it's not. God love the technology. All right, so I had to reconnect here. It looks like it uh, booted me out when uh, John dropped, so I'm back in now. All right, so sorry if you're getting the audio. I'm coming right back around, and I'm gonna share with you two case studies today. Uh, but again, Angie, if you're there, can you just confirm that uh, you're getting uh, okay audio? Good, we are good. All right, so let me share desktop. Uh, again, hopefully you picked up a few nice ideas from uh, John. Really love the fact he's working with a team. You don't get to 100 million a year in production without some kind of a team supporting you. It's very unlikely. Uh, and again, some of the stuff he's doing is really getting outside of the traditional mindset of working with conversations. I've had a chance to work with John uh, personally and, and coach him now for about the last seven or eight years. And he is a, a wonderful, wonderful dude. Um, all right, let me uh, try to share again. It keeps kicking out my sharing. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get through it this time. All right, I'm going to pull up the uh, software. And uh, Angie, again, if you have any trouble, just I'm going to I'm going to go into a live share mode here. Uh, just call me on mobile if uh, something's going on. I don't know about it. Uh, there were two two scenarios I want to talk about. One is a reverse mortgage because uh, I did a, a client call with a company this week that was doing reverse mortgages. They were adding it and they wanted to know 
if our software had the capability to illustrate a reverse mortgage. And we haven't talked about that in a while, and I want to make sure you understood how the software can be used dynamically for reverse mortgages. And I have, I have other users who don't do reverse mortgages, but sometimes they're talking with a client about a reverse mortgage or a forward mortgage, and they want to be able to compare the two. So I want to show you, you know, two key tools here that you want to, you want to know about. Uh, one right here is in our calculators. Uh, we have a reverse mortgage integration with uh, their uh, basic uh, calculator, and it allows you to go in and put in uh, someone's birth date, say 2 uh, 1943 and uh, the home value, 250000 and the zip code, and then if there's any mortgage currently outstanding, we'll say it's 100000 and you can calculate that. It's going to go through and pull current live interest rates for the options for that particular client in that zip code. That's all you need. This is really a great tool for financial advisors. Whenever I say that, I want to make sure when, when you hear me say this is a great tool for financial advisors. If you're a financial advisor, then I'm talking to you. If you're a loan officer, I'm talking to you because that means it's something that you could share with a financial advisor through our partner program where you're giving them access to this tool or it's something you can share that you have access to that you're able to help them quickly identify for their client. In this case, with a Heckam LIBOR, they could borrow today at 3.496%. They could borrow $149,000. Uh, that's net. That would give them, after closing costs, that would give them the ability to pay off that $100,000 mortgage and have it go to zero. Plus, that would give them $49,018 uh, in cash at closing tax-free. So if you were happen to be working with a client, I'm going to show you a real case here uh, where this client has uh, about 50000 a year in retirement income. They're in a 20% tax bracket. And this is their current situation. They have a 30-year fix with Wells Fargo at 7.5% and a $68,000 balance. And they're paying $1,350 per month. So now you'll notice right here what I did is I took their information and I pasted it in, or I put it into the calculator, and then I just cut and pasted right into here. So in other words, I, I took their current situation, their current um, uh, income, I mean, I'm sorry, not income, their current birth date, their current house value, and their zip code, and when I ran this calculator, I just put my mouse in and I copied that, hit Control C and copied it. Then I go over to the software and I paste it right here. So for this client, uh, they're 67 and 63. They've recently retired and they're going to continue to work part time in retirement. I pasted in what they could do. They could do a loan of 102,777 or 133,687 if they went with the fixed option. Uh, that would give them $68,000 to use to pay off the mortgage, and they'd be left with between 34,277 and 65,687. So now I know how, what I have to work with for this particular client. So I go over to the other page, and what a lot of people who are looking at reverse mortgages are trying to figure out is whether or not they're better off going with a new a forward mortgage and just refinancing or paying off, let's say, that existing mortgage or going with a reverse or a HELOC. And you can compare all of those side by side. So here's their current mortgage of 68000 and here we look at a new 30-year fix. So the house is worth 267. They have a 30-year fixed. They could refinance that to 70,000, which would give them some money to pay off their closing costs, which would be a couple grand. And they could refinance that now. When I did this, it was 5%. I'll put in four. So we'll make this uh, dynamic. Actually, we'll put in 3.75 because they could probably, yeah, that, that low loan amount, you probably would be around 4%. So you can see this would be one option, right? See how easy that is? All I got to do is put in 30-year fixed. 70,004%. And what am I doing? I'm refinancing them from the 68 they have now to a new 70. And of course, I would put in whatever closing costs I think. In this case, the closing cost for this particular transaction would be about two grand. Now, you know, you'd have prepaids, but uh, we're just leaving those off because they're going to be a wash. Now, what about the reverse? How would I illustrate a reverse? I just put in reverse mortgage here. And from the drop downs, I picked reverse mortgage. The amount that this client could get on a fixed, and this is from the other page, remember how much could they borrow today? And uh, for this client on a, a fixed loan, uh, they could borrow up to, uh, at the time it was 148, right now it says 
uh, 687. So I'm just going to take that and put that in over here. And I won't change it because when I ran it before, it was 148, 687 is what they could borrow. And the fixed on that was five and a quarter. So that's a fixed reverse mortgage. Now that's a higher interest rate. That's probably lower now because this has been in here a while. Um, let's let's go in. Let's just do it. I'll do it for you live. So 267 is a property value. So let's go in reverse vision. And uh, the client was 67. So you're gonna have to help me here with the math. We'll do 2012. I don't know their exact birthday. 2012 uh, minus 60. Seven, and they were going to do this on the oldest spouse. That's 1945. So let's just say one, one, 1945. That's the oldest uh, spouse that they were going to do the mortgage on for the reverse. 267 was the house value, and let's just see what they could get uh, right now. And they owe 68,000. See, so that's all I need. I need the, and if you're going to do both spouses, you put in both birth dates. It's always going to do it off of the uh, youngest of the two. House value zip code and loan amount so when i put this in here we go 5.685 is the current fixed rate and they could get 137 so this is what i meant by copying and pasting so i'm just going to come in here hit control c so i'm going to do this first and then i'm going to come over to my reverse mortgage case and here's what i'm going to do i'm just going to hit control v and paste that in and that's going to put all that information that i just ran the other thing into the uh Software. I don't know why I didn't keep the formatting, but um, so my uh, uh, my available loan. Sorry, I didn't keep the uh, formatting. I wonder if that's because of something I did. Well, I'm not going to go through that again. So um, so you can paste this in, and you've got all that information right here: the HECM, the fixed, the margin, the initial rate, 5.685. So I'm going to hit Control C, and I'm just going to come over to the borrow page and hit control V. I'm going to put in their fixed rate. All right. And then let's go back over here and let's look at their, uh, what could they um, uh, borrow today? Available loan. Uh, the highest that they could get for the fixed was the 137, 332. Right. So I'm going to go over here and put that in. Control V. All right. So that's it. And with your and with and with these, you can put in the closing costs if you know what they're going to be. In this case, um, we knew it was going to be about eleven eight ninety five was the closing cost for this transaction. So oh, I, I know what I did. I took the one thirty seven three thirty two and I added the closing costs in um, because they're going to be financed into the loan, and that's why we had the one forty eight eight ninety the one forty eight. So when you when you when you calculate using a reverse mortgage calculator, it'll typically give you the net loan. So in this case, 137, 332, 137, 332, that's your net loan. And you can get a breakout or an estimate of the closing costs. And if you're doing reverse mortgages, you'll often have something that you can use for that. And, and you can do it either way. You can just put in this number. Here, I'll do it this way since it's easier. I'll take this out. Okay. So this is your net loan amount. And what we're going to basically do is we're going to say the closing costs are, are zero because the closing costs to the client are net zero in this case because they've been financed in. The actual loan amount would be like 149 and the closing costs would be like 11. But the net to them is that they're getting the loan of 137, 332 and there's nothing else that's been financed in there. If you can and you can get an estimate of the closing costs, I like to put in the actual loan amount and then put the closing costs here because that's going to give you the same net number out either way. But what you can do here is have the same conversation with your client. 30 year fix and reverse. If you do a 30 year fix, you're going to spend two grand. It's rolled in. You got no cash at closing impact. If you do the reverse, you got 69,332 coming in net at closing. The cash flow difference. You're spending 1350 now. Your new mortgage payment's 334. That's a $70,000 loan at 3.5%. So you're going to free up 1016 a month if you just did a forward mortgage. If you did a reverse mortgage, you're going to free up 1350 a month because you have no monthly mortgage payment on a reverse mortgage. And the software see, it knows it's a reverse mortgage, so it's calculating your payment to be zero and it's adding the principal to the mortgage and, and doing basically a negative AM loan for you. And then if I come down here to the actual payments, 
Here I'm paying $13.50, here I'm paying $13.34, here I'm paying nothing. You can look at the client's time frame and uh, go out whatever time frame they have. Let's just say their time frame is to be in this house for 15 years and you can compare the financial impact. So the wealth impact is what? I've lost $170,295. And that's true if you spent the whole uh, 69,332 and you spent the 1350 a month. So another way of saying that is if all of that over 15 years went to support my lifestyle, I funded that 1350 a month for 15 years and the 69,332 at closing for 15 years by using 170,295 of my equity or my wealth. Now this is a, again, if you're not familiar with reverses, this may not be as clear for you, but I, it's a really cool thing to know that you can do this and that you can integrate this. I mean, we have a couple of videos up on it on the site. Now what if the client said, well, I'm going to keep the 1350. I'm going to enjoy that for my lifestyle, but the 69,332, I want to invest that at closing. Well, then I just come in here and say, okay, let's put in 69,332 as a one-time uh, investment, okay? And it's gonna go put that into the savings account. So here's your savings balance is 69,332. So if you were gonna invest that over, say a 5% return, put it in a muni bond over the next 15 years, now look what happens. Here's my dynamic here, my actual wealth impact I got $13.50 a month for 15 years that I freed up, or for however many years I had remaining on the mortgage, and the net wealth impact is a, is a $93,687 cost because I'm taking that lump sum and investing it at 5%. It's growing to $145,939. I'm still getting that, my appreciation of 1% a year on the house. But you can see here how you can have that conversation with the client. Say, which of these is better for you? This is going to eat up $93,000 of your wealth. This is going to cost you an extra 23,000 in wealth over 15 years, but what's the difference here? I've got 1016 a month or 1350 a month I wouldn't have here, and I've got 69,000 cash or no cash impact over here. So, hopefully that helps. It's just it's just to know it's in here. If you don't do reverse mortgages, I found that advisors get really excited about your ability to help them answer these kinds of questions, and if you wanted just to do a reverse mortgage scenario, you could just shrink this up and simply compare their current mortgage today to a new reverse, 7.5 to 5.685, no out-of-pocket expense, 69,332 at closing, 1350 a month in positive cash flow. Uh, the cost to you is about 93,687. If you gave the 69,000 to the advisor at closing and he earned 5% for you, that's gonna grow to 145,939, that's your money and then you get the cash flow to play with along the way. That's a pretty cool uh, uh, thing to be able to do. We have a large institution that's looking at this now for reverse mortgage illustrations for their clients, and if they do, we'll be adding a bunch of new uh, features uh, with some additional reverse mortgage education and a closer integration with reverse vision. Let me show you one more uh, scenario here because a question came in about margin loans, and so I dug into a case study that I had worked up uh, on a, a client who was buying a house and they were looking at working with their advisor and the advisor had recommended them using a margin loan for their down payment. So let's take a look at that case here. So here's the situation. I got a couple and they're both renting. So some of you may have seen a situation, right, where one spouse has a landlord, they're paying $950 a month. The other spouse has a landlord, they're paying $700 a month. All right, they have no other liabilities and they're renting right now and they're getting married and they want to buy a new house together after they get married. Okay, so to do this I would do a rent versus purchase because they're both renting now and they want to purchase and the house they want to buy is $285,000. They have combined income of one fifty-eight, dollars and they're in a 37% tax bracket. So how would you do that? You come to the bar tab and they have no current liabilities so I shrink that up because it's irrelevant. They're looking at a 30-year fixed with no margin. So if they have no margin and they want to do a 30-year fixed and they want to borrow 80%, that means a loan amount of 228 at 3.75%, payment of 1352.90, and of course the closing costs are right here. We estimate about 3,500 in closing costs. How would I compare this 
to both renting versus owning and also compare it to margin or no margin. Because this advisor was saying, look, you've got no other debt. You've got a bunch of money invested with me. We could do 100% financing on this house. How would you do that? You can't really get 100% financing, but you can. Because they could get an 80% first mortgage on a 30-year fix, just like above. See, the above is the same. The difference is the advisor would do a margin loan for them against their securities of $57,000 and put that in their checking account. And you could let it season or they could put it in there because it's their money. And you've got a 3% pre-tax rate uh, or taxable, tax deductible rate uh, on that margin because that margin loan is tax deductible. So you've got 100% tax deductible, deductibility for this client and they've got no out-of-pocket uh, cost to do this. And you can see their payments, $1,352 versus $1,495. So again, very few people understand some of these ideas and very few people can illustrate this and work with an advisor to figure out if this makes sense or not. First, to be able to do the house with no margin, they'd have to have $60,500. That's their down payment plus their closing costs. So that's $60,500 they'd need. We say they have that available, 60,500 is available. So they have no cash at closing left over, but they gotta do what? They gotta come to the closing table with 60,500. In this scenario, they'd only have to come to the closing table with their closing costs. So if they came to the closing table with 3,500, but they have 60,500 available, that leaves $57,000. That's the net difference of these two scenarios. How about from a, a tax, uh, after tax payment standpoint? To do pre-tax, we show pre-tax, expand your after-tax, because it's, it's, it's actually relevant here. Your, your pre-tax and after-tax payment, because the margin loan is deductible, means that their payment difference is only $89 a month. So it costs them an extra $89 a month to have no money down, so to speak, using the, mortgage, the margin loan as part of their down payment. Now, if some of you said, wait a minute, I can't borrow the 20% down, then just take the fifty-seven or the, take the sixty thousand five hundred from the account, from their investment account, and use the margin loan to replace the securities if that's what you need to do. In other words, I draw draw from my assets and then do a margin loan for the same amount and replace those assets. Uh, you know, thirty days later. So if if that's a problem for you, you can do it either way. You know, but what I want you to focus on is the concept here of talking to this, and then how would I how would I explain the financial impact? Uh, of doing this over over time, right? So I've got a 1495.40 payment. That's my highest possible payment. Now, what I want to be able to do is I want to say that that 57,000 that I have left over, uh, I can I can do anything I want to that with that. I can spend it. I can save it. I can repay it. So you would come in here and say, I want to take that 57,000 one time. All right, because I'm going to make a one-time payment into my into my savings account. So I can show the difference over time. I could spend that fifty-seven thousand. Let me just take this away. All right. So if I did this, and I took the fifty-seven thousand that I had at closing, and I just went and spent it over thirty years, that's going to have a negative impact on my wealth. I got to spend fifty-seven thousand dollars that I wouldn't have gotten to spend otherwise. But we're going to say if you've got that 57000 left over at closing because you only had to bring 3500 to the closing table and you're working with the advisor, our assumption is, is that you're going to uh, make a one-time payment of 57000 back to that advisor to let him invest it. And at a 5.5% return, which is what he was using, you'll notice that savings account grew to 294329 If you're ever uncertain about something, slide to zero okay and then go forward one year you can see what happened here what we did is at closing that that checking that savings account here is going to be 59,940. that's the uh the closing cash plus the five and a half percent interest for a year here all they would get to save is their is their payment difference they get to invest 89 dollars a month which is their extra payment difference here uh would go into that account plus five and a half percent so this is going to show you how better, how much better off are you over time? I can go out 15 years. I'm better off by 41,999. If I look at the compounding impact of this decision over time, I'm better off by 126,123 dollars over a 30-year period of time. 
Now that's true because I'm earning a 5.5% after-tax rate of return. If I was earning no return on that money, would that be the same? Uh-uh. I'd lose money. I'm better off paying the money into the mortgage and not borrowing because the borrowing cost of that money is my margin rate, in this case 3%. So this works really well because I'm earning an estimated 5.5% over time. But this is, again, I'm trying to do a little more advanced case studies for those of you guys coming on these calls because I want to show you some of the, the power. And I'm trying to balance that with the simple ability for most of you just to do a one or two page plan and answer most of the questions uh, that your clients may have. So let me see if you have any questions because I know it is uh, 3 o'clock here, but I want to see if you have any questions about uh, what we just covered. Um, my marketing idea, so we did a reverse or forward, so I want you to know that you could do a reverse or a forward scenario here and then a margin loan strategy because so many people don't think about that as part of their arsenal of lending strategies and a wonderful way to interact with a financial advisor. Even if the advisor says, no, I don't want to do that, I would rather them just take the money out of their account and pay cash for the property using this scenario, so this is what I would propose that they do. The fact that you even know what a margin account is and that that's something you understand and that you're working with a client at this level will get you a lot of new opportunities with that advisor, with that CPA, with anyone that you happen to be talking to. So my marketing idea for this week, again, is refocusing on just the margin loan. It can be worked we, once before we talked about it uh, from a refinance perspective to buy down uh, some debt. Another way to do it is to think about it as a strategy for purchasing and allowing that client to buy a house with little money down and leave that money invested if that's what they'd like to do. All right, I'm going to have to stop for one second, see if uh, there's some uh, uh, questions over here. Angie, I know you were going to type some in for me as they came in. Uh, let me, uh, I don't see any questions in here right now. Does that mean there aren't any? Nope, not as yet. Okay. So that means I either confused everybody completely or I did a good job explaining the concepts. All right, so that's going to be it for today. Um, I will be on vacation next week and I won't have good internet access, so we'll probably skip next week and start up the following week. If all goes well, I'll be able to demo for you the new HTML uh, version uh, of our presentation uh, system at that time. If uh, we haven't released it yet, I'll be able to go over that with you in more detail. And as always, if you have questions, feel free to email us at support at and uh, let us know how we can make this a better tool for you. We are also working on a couple other smaller enhancements with some graph and, graphs and charts that you'll be able to uh, use in here because many of you have said that you're doing a lot of your client presentations are live. Uh, so we're working on some toggles here where you could actually just show some of this as a graph and a chart instead of numbers, which will make it easier for clients. And with the HTML reports, we're going to be creating some totally new report formats, uh, a one pager uh, that you could actually use. It would show everything for your client on one single page. So those are some of the new things we actually are working on in conjunction with the HTML reports. I vote good job. Okay. Thanks, Angie. Uh, so thanks everybody for your time. Have a, a, a great rest of your weekend. And uh, thanks for spending a little time with us today. And as always, if you pick up one idea from John or from me over the last hour that can help you, and I'd rather you pick up one idea and go integrate that in some way into your business uh, than to try to take five or ten ideas and not implement any of them uh, as you uh, think about uh, taking a few minutes and, and making some notes for yourself as to what did you pick up today that you could incorporate. What would be one action item that you could incorporate into your business based on some of the things you heard today? So that's it. Wish you the best. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk soon.